Hello everyone, Professor William Watkin here and welcome to the second chapter of my ongoing series of films investigating antisocial media. The topic of this chapter is Trolls. Episode 4, LULS. How Trolls Get Their Kicks. I take trolling to mean hostile online behaviour where you take on a persona, avatar or mask whose emotional responses and general position on things is over-exaggerated. Right-wing trolls tend to be self-righteously outraged about liberalism's holier-than-thou stance on things like political correctness and identity politics. Left-wing trolls usually play the victim, calling on the world to witness the digital hate crimes directed towards them. But in truth, we're all universal trolls because, let's face it, online, we're performing an edited and exaggerated version of ourselves. In this manner, then, trolling is a term for our collective behaviour online. We hide behind a digital mask so we can say on Twitter what we would not dare to say in public, or so we can allow ourselves to be offended by comments that, if uttered by someone we know, in the context of a face-to-face -face conversation, we would probably just let pass. That said, strictly speaking, when trolling as a term went mainstream three to four years ago, in certain ways it ceased to be trolling in the truest sense of the term. As Whitney Phillips' study of trolls, this is why we can't have nice things, explains, trolls were originally marginalised members of society who had a mastery of the new digital tech and who set up forums and the like in the early noughties, such as the infamous 4chan. Using 4chan and their hacking expertise, these first trolls specialised in ridiculing those in the media in particular, trying to cause moral panics based on fake news stories, although they weren't called that then. Or they would just relentlessly pursue noobs trying to get onto 4chan or other platforms, humiliating them, exposing them, mocking them, in the endless pursuit of the currency that drives trolling to this day. Lulls. Lulls are a bit like lols, I suppose, but as Phillips explains, citing the Trollers' Almanac, the Encyclopedia Dramatica, lols celebrates the anguish of the laughed at victim, making it longer, girthier and more pleasurable. Lols is the only reason to do anything if you are a troll, she explains, allowing a single answer for why anyone would say or do the kinds of things trolls do. I did it for the lols. Using the testimony of many original trolls, Phillips identifies three qualities of lols. So, lols are emotionally disassociative. You don't care how much you hurt someone else. They're also generative. They begin a whole process of trolling activity over a period of time, involving a community of participating trolls through memes, hacks, forum, and so on. Then they are magnetic. They attract attention. But they also bring together a band of trolls in pursuit of their common enemy. Who is that enemy? That is easy. Those of you out there who take yourselves too seriously, get upset too easily, or are emotionally fragile. I think we can sum up these kinds of people in one word, snowflakes. In other words, millennial culture in general is the quarry of every predatory troll. Another central feature of Troll is masking. Trolls must remain anonymous. Indeed, Anon was a collective identity that Trolls would take on in various campaigns of hate and lulls back in the day. Trolling allows you to disconnect from the actions of your person. Not so that you can be whoever you want to be. Trolling is not an advert for the new iPad. But so you can be the only thing worth being. A troll on the hunt for lulls. This persona is impersonal, collective, and definitely not aspirational. It's the dark other of the Silicon Valley ideology, which began the unbelievable success of Web 2.0. A mask for the trolls is not just a form of anonymization, however, it's also a mode of community and communication. When a person puts on the trolling mask, other trolls might pick up on that thanks to codes of expression that only trolls know about. Their victims will think the troll is being serious and they become upset. But the other trolls listening in will realise the troll's just joking, looking for lols. They will then don their masks and join in, taking the trolling as far as they possibly can. If you think of social media as an echo chamber, trolling is designed to make the hollow, vindictive and mocking laughter ring in your ears for as long as possible. 
This durational quality of laws is very interesting because it's based on a meme culture that is by definition immaterial, passing, temporary, ephemeral, totally disposable. It's almost as if lulls provide kicks because of this tightrope walk between the totally transitory nature of the post and its lasting emanations across our collective bandwidths. You may have noticed that while the behaviour of trolls is hard to come to terms with, I mean, who laughs at those already in distress to make them even more unhappy? But the ways in which trolling worked when trolls were all about the lulls whilst pathetic, is also prophetic because it describes the online world we've made for ourselves. Social media, for example, is emotionally disassociative because the evolved prompts that inhibit behaviour in face-to-face -face encounters are not present on Twitter. This means many people will just not get what you mean, get the tone wrong and overreact. And it also means you may go further than you normally would because no one knows who you are or you may ever exaggerate because you know people on Twitter will overreact and there are more lulls that way, although you don't call them that. An interesting dialectic here, I suppose, is that the emotional disassociation of trolling has the opposite effect of making your victims over-exaggerate their emotional response. You say you don't like a certain kind of ice cream. They accuse you of not knowing what you're talking about. You threaten to kill them and all their family, that sort of thing. The second element of lulls is that they were generative for the trolls. Trolling was part of a long campaign of provocation and lies, which became a kind of sport for the trolls to see how long they could keep the whole thing going. The incredible inventiveness of contemporary meme culture comes from this generative tendency which not only makes memes, but also generates, of course, a sense of insider meme culture or communities of memers. For all the hate in trolling, the original trolls saw themselves as a creative digital avant-garde. And something of this has carried over into our collective creativity on Web 2.0. Trolling, then, is bizarrely a positive part of our digital literacy. Third, Phillips mentions magnetism. Trolling in pursuit of lulls is attractive to the central currency, uh, the, sorry, is attractive to the central currency of our online culture, which is attention. And again, this attention grabbing is also community building. If we take the phenomenon of online influencers, for example, as a business model, these are just attractive, more socially adept, cooler versions of those alienated, bedroomed geeks back in the late 90s and early noughties, who eventually became our trolls. Attention grabbing is really what it all boils down to, people. Building a platform, bringing traffic to your platform, doing whatever it takes to keep hold of their attention. In a society of chronic inattention, as the poet John Ashby once termed it, one has to work 10 times as hard, no, 100 times as hard even, to get people to just like you back. This means inevitably many will resort to trollish tactics. Laughing at suicides, eating detergent tablets, outrise news faking, clickbaiting, and so on. Which leaves us with the mask, which could be, in fact, a catch-all term for trolling in its purest form, trolling in its mainstream form, and in fact trolling as the definition of all our online lives. It's a term so central to what our world has become, that it deserves a vlog all its own, don't you think? Thanks everyone for listening. If you enjoyed that content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also, if you want more of the same, check out those little links at the bottom of the screen.